Hi guys, it's Mrs. Elbitz here and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so poem number seven, Spruirian. In this poem, in this poem, we're going to talk a lot about orchards, um, which is Narki orchards, Mandarin, you can say Tangerine orchards. Orchards is when we um, plant trees in a little line, and it's normally fruit trees. And um, yeah, just so you have a little bit of um, the language that we are going to use, so Buerde is orchards, and Mandarin or Tangerine is Nachis. We are going to talk about swart fuluis, which is a word that I also didn't know until this poem, and that refers to the Black Umfulosi River in KwaZulu Natal, which you can see on these pictures. Spruirian, my noes in a narki, my oman kaneel, daar iemand, iemand in a nice, daar a vrou in elke geer. My love is in an archie, my grandmother in cinnamon. There's someone, someone in any seed. There's a woman in every scent. When we look at our title, it refers to that fine mist you get when you take a citrus fruit um, peel and you press it and the fine mist breaks out, like our video. But with that mist, there's also a smell, and that is where the focus is of this poem. This poem is all about the smell, riek. My noi is in a narki refers to a girlfriend. So noi here doesn't mean to invite, it's the homonym, it means girlfriend, an older version of Afrikaans word. So this is a metaphor, ladies and gents, a figurative language. This girl isn't literally in the nachi, but whenever he smells the nachi, the tangerine, he is reminded of his love, his girlfriend. We've got the alliteration here for sound purposes, for rhythm. In line two, his grandmother is in cinnamon. So when he smells cinnamon, he thinks of his grandmother. Again, it's the metaphor. It's the smell that is important here. We have line three, the ellipse. So there's somebody, and then there's the ellipse, and then he repeats somebody. So that ellipse there is a pause to think. He's trying to remember who he is reminded of when he smells any seed, but he's not quite sure who. So there's also that repetition of imant. It's because he tries to recall and then decides he cannot recall and then just uh, repeats the word imant in any seed. So any seed here, kaneel, narki, all these senses, um, is smells, this is synesthesia. So it's basically when you, um, you smell something, you touch, you feel, you taste. It's part of the senses. You, you are experiencing things through senses. And here he is experiencing woman through smells. Elisi dar is, dar in line four. He says there is a woman in every scent. And then there's an exclamation mark because he is so shocked and astonished. And I want to say it's almost a, a call of uh, bewilderment or, or bewilderment. He, he, he is astonished at the fact that whenever he smells certain smells, he thinks of these fantastic women in his life. Um, we have Eun Kiepung in this first stanza because this is in fact a chorus. So you'll see how stanza one and stanza two um, is repeated exactly the same. It is because it's the chorus. You only have one part of the actual poem. Now here's something interesting. So uh, sense bypass the thalamus and go straight to the brain's smell center known as the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is directly connected to the amygdala and hippocampus, which might explain why the smell of something can so immediately trigger a detailed memory or even an intense emotion. And I want you to think about it before we go over to the next stanza. If you smell something, what do you smell and who does it make you think of? So, um, is, it, is it rain, wet ground? Is it maybe a specific um, smell? Like I've spoken to my learners in class and it seems like the perfume red door uh, reminds 
them are grandmothers, mothers, aunts. Um, just think of a moment. What do you smell and who do you think of? As ek a stikkie naarkie skil tussen my vingers buig of knak, breek uit die klein sproeireen wat gerend om my hand uitsak, die boorde weer van swaard voeloos, en met die naarkies om my jyn weet ek hoe dat a vrou kan troos. When some naarkie peel I bend or snap between my fingers, there breaks out the fine spray which drizzles fragrantly around my hand. Once again the orchards of black umflozi, and with the naarkies around me, I know how a woman can comfort. So first he explained to you that he's got memories whenever he smells certain smells. He's got memories of women. Here is the story of why his girlfriend, um, hide, or her memory hides within the nachi. So he explains the whole process here. He says when he takes this nachi peel and he bends it or he snaps it between his fingers and this um, spray comes out and the smell, because remember there's a strong smell that comes out as well. Um, it's very fragrant. And this spruirian, this, this mist, basically lands on his hand, because as you know, if you press it and it kind of rains down on your hand, he remembers the orchards at in KwaZulu-Natal at the Swart um, Umfalozi River. So this reminds him of his youth. They used to live with this speaker and your writer, actually, your, your poet. He grew up in KwaZulu-Natal and in the, these orchards, he used to spend time with his girlfriend. And so whenever he smells the nachi, he immediately is taken to that time in KwaZulu-Natal, in the orchards of the Black Mfulosi River, and he remembers how this woman can comfort. So this is a romantic memory, whether it is that he was maybe troubled and she comforted him, or if it is just the comfort of a woman's arms, her embrace, um, he remembers his girlfriend. Now there's some inversion in line seven to nine where the words have been changed slightly in the word order in Stompy, so that you have this beautiful line of words from line five all the way down to line nine. Now look at this. You can only look at the last word and then you can see kind of like a story already. Nachi peel, bend or snap, fine mist, uh, rain on hand, Black and Fulosi. So it's showing you how immediately the memory is called up. It's also to emphasize the word spruirian in line seven by putting it right at the back. Then us means to comfort, and you have an end rhyme of A, B, C, B, D, C, D, which means some of the words rhyme, but not everything, and it's not really in a pattern, so it's gebroeke rhyme. And then he uses seven lines here to explain this memory of this woman. Is he maybe trying to say that since seven is a perfect number, that, I don't know, you know, women are perfect? Enjambment, obviously here we've got a lot of enjambment. Please do not say that the enjambment goes from line five to line 11, because it doesn't. It goes from five to six, seven to eight, and nine to 11. But yes, the entire section here, this entire stanza two, flows quite nicely and quite fast. Um, and that is due to your enjambment. Here you have exactly the same stanza as in stanza one, so the exact same words apart from one thing. So this is your chorus again. It gives you that singy type of songy uh, vibe. We have the word ua, which is an exclamation of just uh, amazement at the woman. So this entire poem is written as an ode to females. It's an ode to women in the speaker's life. He sees every woman as a specific smell. Um, he sees women as being comforting, and he only has good memories about the woman in his life. So this poem really is just to say, woman, you are amazing. There is an exclamation at the end of this um, chorus because he is just, it's emphasizing his um, amazement and how he admires women. It's his admiration, basically, that you see in this poem. Admiration of his grandmother, of a um, female in his life, his girlfriend, and that somebody that he couldn't quite put his finger on. Um, but the poem just says, woman, you are awesome. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you've got any questions, you can follow me on Instagram at Afrikaans Classroom. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Like and share.